Hello friends, it's Jessica from Three Rivers Homestead and I'm coming at you from Northwest Ohio where fall is officially over. The cornfields have been taken down and we're getting our first snow. So the seasons are changing. We started our week out the way that we always do, together, studying the word as a family. The little ones often color while we do our Bible study and worship time. It's just a great way to kind of begin our week focused on the Lord and on the things that truly matter in this life. So since it's winter, our chickens and ducks are starting their egg laying break. So we need to start using our preserved eggs. And on this day, I decided to try out some of our freeze dried chicken eggs. I'm going to cut into our mylar bag here. This mylar bag can be reused. If I empty it and clean it out, we can just use it again and then seal it and continue to keep using it. This oxygen absorber right here though, this cannot be reused. So we will get rid of that. And we're just gonna dump the contents here into a bowl. This was exactly one dozen chicken eggs that I preserved last spring when we had an overabundance of eggs. I don't use an exact formula for rehydrating my freeze dried food. I just add water until I get it to the desired texture. So that's what I'm doing here. Now I preserve extra eggs in a variety of different ways. I've done many videos on water glassing. That is my preferred method for preserving eggs. That's when you use a solution of lime water and you put your whole eggs into it. And honestly, I prefer the taste and texture of my water glassed eggs even to the freeze dried eggs. Um, I've frozen eggs before that were scrambled up, also not my preferred uh, method. So water glassing is the way that I will continue to preserve the majority of the extra eggs that we have, but I do like freeze drying for different reasons. Freeze drying eggs is super convenient if you're going to be doing something like going camping or if you lack the storage space to um, preserve water glassed eggs because the water glassed eggs do take up more space. This freeze drying obviously condenses it down and you can pack a whole lot more eggs into a smaller space. Um, you can see that these freeze dried eggs scramble up just like uh, fresh eggs would. I will say that the smell of them is slightly different than a fresh raw egg. It's more like a concentrated egg smell. It's not bad, it's just a little different. And um, the texture of them is just fine, just like a, a raw fresh egg. So it isn't bad and we'll continue to preserve some this way just for the convenience of it. Like I said, if we go camping, but I think water glassing wins the um, contest for the best way to preserve eggs. We're obviously busy as usual with our homeschooling. You guys know I have five official homeschool age students this year. I have a kindergartner, I have fourth grade, sixth grade, eighth grade, and a freshman in high school. And then on top of that, I've got two little boys that I have to keep busy while we're doing all of our lessons. But I love this. I love homeschooling. It's one of my favorite parts of the day. I love being a part of my children's education and watching them learn and make these connections. So we're really trying to hit the books and get as much work done as we can because we typically take a break in the end of December while Adam is off work. And that just so happens to line up nicely with the time that I will be postpartum with my baby. And so we're planning on taking a good two to three week break coming up here in the end of December. Now, on this day, I got out my big five gallon bucket of pinto beans. I had lots of questions recently about why we don't eat a lot of beans. And I guess to answer that, we do. I just haven't shown you guys a lot of um, bean preservation because typically when my canning jars are used up uh, for produce, I don't can a lot of dried beans. But on this day, I'm working on refried beans. And in order to do that, I fill my jar with dried beans about a third of the way full. You can see here I'm doing that. And um, I'm making these refried beans for convenient meals postpartum. So after I fill them with the beans, I add a little bit of lemon juice or apple cider vinegar to each jar. And then I'm gonna fill with water. 
Now the purpose for this, these are going to soak overnight when the acid from the lemon juice or the apple cider vinegar breaks down the phytic acid in the beans and makes them easier to digest. Soaking them for the 24 hours also has helps the beans swell up to the size that they will be when I can them. Um, so you know exactly how many will fit in your jar. So this is how I can my beans. We're going to set those aside and we're just going to let them soak and swell up with water for the next 24 hours. I've done a video on canning dry beans before and the method I use to do that. Not refried beans specifically, but just regular canned dry beans. So if you want to see that, I will put that link in the description of this video. And there's little Benji giving you guys a kiss. <laughs> All right, 24 hours later, you can see I have my jars of beans here. I ended up doing two more jars with apple cider vinegar. You can see the difference in the dark color of the beans in this jar that I used apple cider vinegar. The lemon juice bleached out the bean color a little bit. So I just thought that was an interesting difference. And like I said, any acid works for this. So now that these are all um, soaked, I drain the beans and rinse them, rinse out my jars, and now we're gonna get ready to fill them to make our refried beans. So that water was just for soaking, we got rid of it. We're gonna use new water for the canning process. But first, I took a pound of bacon here, and I cut it all up, and we are gonna split this pound of bacon between these seven quart jars. These are obviously not vegetarian refried beans that I'm making. Um, we prefer the bacon flavor in our refried beans, but if you are a vegetarian or a vegan, you would obviously skip this step and just leave the bacon out of your refried beans. So no measurements here. We're just kind of eyeballing it and trying to split that bacon evenly between all of the jars. Next thing we're going to do, I'm going to take one onion and I'm going to chop it up. And we are also going to split that one onion between the seven quart jars. And basically we're just taking all of the ingredients that you would put into refried beans if you were making them, you know, fresh on the stove. And we are putting all of those ingredients into our canning jars. They're all going to cook up together. And then later on when we want to make refried beans, we can just dump the jar out and fry them up. Next thing I'm doing is I took about seven cloves of garlic, uh, you know, approximately one clove per jar, and I'm just crushing it up. And then we are also going to do the same thing. I'm gonna take a spoon there and I'm just gonna split that crushed garlic between our seven jars. Next, we're adding a tablespoon of oregano to each jar. And then after that, I forgot to film it, but I did one teaspoon of salt per jar and I used pink Himalayan salt. From there, we're just refilling now with our beans. And this is why you wanted those beans soaked. It's not just for the digestibility of it, but you can see now I know exactly the size the beans are going to be as they cook in the jar. If I had put dried beans in like this, they would have swell, like swelled up during the canning process. So I just find this really convenient to measure out my beans, having them pre-soaked like this. I left the beans with a little more than an inch of headspace in the jar, and then we filled with water to an inch of headspace. Make sure you get those air bubbles out. Those beans have a lot of little nooks and crannies in them for air to be trapped. So we're just going through and releasing all of those air bubbles and then making sure that we have about an inch headspace uh, before we begin the canning process. This is really simple, um, a simple project to do that leaves you with seven really easy meals here. We're going to take a little rag and just wipe off the lids. We didn't use anything particularly sticky, so... Um, we, we shouldn't have any seal issues, but wiping it is just good best practice. We're going to use our four jars canning lids. As usual, you can get 10% off your lids if you use the link in the description of this video. So make sure you check that out. We're going to get our rings on, and then we are going to pressure can these beans for 90 minutes. And at my elevation, I use 10 PSI. You need to check what your elevation is. There you go. All ready and going into the pressure canner. And then 90 minutes later, we have 
our beans all done here. It's definitely not the prettiest thing to look at. The fat from the bacon there, um, you know, doesn't look very pretty in the jar, but it's going to taste amazing. And you can see that the liquid level at the top um, isn't all the way full covering the beans. And that's okay. That's perfectly safe. As long as our seals are good, these will be good on the shelf. Now when we go to fry it up, all of that lovely fat from the bacon, that will help us fry this up. And we'll make our refried beans by just dumping the jar into a pan, frying all of those delicious flavors up. And then we'll add that to our burritos or to our rice or whatever it is we're making that day. So I'm very excited. We had seven quarts of these beans. That's seven more meals I have going into <laughs> baby time. Um, it'll be very easy for the kids to make those meals for me, um, having them all ready in the jar. So speaking of my meal prep, this was my list I showed you several months ago of what I'm working on, trying to have all of this prepared before the baby comes. And you can see I'm making some progress, but I have quite a bit of work to do. This week, I'm going to focus more on some of the baked goods that I want to have done. Things like um, biscuits I want to have frozen up, pizza dough, pie crust, things like that. I'm also working through my cleaning list here that I made that I've shown you. And so you can see I've made some progress. I'm slowly working my way. Every day I try to do something um, to get the house organized and in order. I just like to have everything cleaned and organized before the baby comes. This week I'm focusing on the mudroom. Since it's starting to snow, we need to make room for all of our winter coats and all of the winter gear. And so that was the project um, for this week. So we're getting there, working on nesting. <laughs> Another part of nesting is getting all of the cute little baby things prepared. So I pulled my bins out of storage, all of the blankets and crib sheets and burp cloths and then all of the cute adorable little clothes. I just pulled out the gender neutral clothing that we have because we don't know if we're having a boy or a girl yet. And then what will happen is we'll pull out gender specific stuff and wash that up um, after the baby is born. But I love these little gowns. These are my favorite with the mitts to cover their little nails and the opening to make diaper changes really easy in the middle of the night. I always keep about a dozen of these little gowns on hand for the newborn. And that's basically what they live in for the first month or so. Cute little hats for them, a couple little onesies and um, some little pants if they need to get dressed. This is adorable. This is a little sleeper. This is what David wore 13, almost 14 years ago coming home from the hospital. He was born in January. So now we're having another winter baby for the first time in a while. And so it's exciting to be able to wear some of these cold weather clothes that have been in storage for so long. So by the time you're having your eighth baby, you really realize you don't need much. <laughs> this is about the extent of the baby stuff um, that I need. We just had to get it washed this week. I have a couple little girls that were very excited to fold and care for the baby clothes. They are just so excited for a new baby. <laughs> so we're just getting everything uh, washed and dried and folded and stored away. Since I've been so busy with all of the cleaning and baby prep, we've been kind of digging into a lot of our preserved food. You can see you got some freeze-dried stuff out. Um, Gabe was in charge of lunch this day, and he decided to make chili. So he's just grabbing jars. He grabbed some chili base. He grabbed some more tomato sauce. He got a jar of canned black beans here. And then he's, of course, going to add those freeze-dried vegetables and this is why I can, you guys. It is so convenient to put quick meals together when you have food that is pre-cooked in your jars. This is going to be such a blessing for my family after the baby is born. The children can literally grab a few jars, whip them together, put them on the stove to heat it up, and then we have a nice home-cooked healthy meal of homegrown produce, home-preserved food, um, and it will prevent us from having to, you know, use really expensive store-bought convenience foods that aren't as healthy for us. So this is a, a blessing to be able to have this convenience heading into what's going to be a very busy um, season for us with a newborn baby. So his chili that he made turned out delicious. He ended up making some biscuits to go along with that. 
And that was a nice um, warm lunch on one of these cold days that we're experiencing here in Ohio. We had a really great homeschool week. Um, just focused. We got a lot done. Gracie moved up a level in math. And then my little guy in kindergarten here for the very first time was able to read some consonant vowel, consonant words. It's just been a wonderful week of learning and growing. I love homeschooling, you guys. It's just such a privilege to be able to be a part of that with my children. So, all right, remember that red wine vinegar that we made back in August? It is all done brewing. It smells ready to go. <laughs> and that's kind of how I do it. I just do it by smell and sometimes taste. If you taste it and it's, it has that vinegar tang, then you know it's ready. So I'm just draining out all of the vinegar. And then what we're going to have left behind is the mother of vinegar. And I'm going to show you guys. We're going to experiment with that mother of vinegar. I think I'm going to freeze dry it this time and see what we can come up with. The mother of vinegar is simply the colony of bacteria that is there to help brew that vinegar. It's the probiotic. It is alive. That little slimy pancake there is a living thing, <laughs> a colony of bacteria, kind of like a kombucha scoby, but it's a different type of bacteria. So you can't use this mother of vinegar to make kombucha. This will only make vinegar for you. So you can see that one batch of vinegar gave us all of these mothers and they are super thick. So that was like some really strong vinegar that we had going. And so all I'm going to do is slice these thick pieces a little thinner. And I'm going to try freeze drying this. This is totally an experiment. I've never seen this done. But my thinking is that I can powder this mother of vinegar down into a probiotic powder that we can take for our health. And also, I would have a shelf-stable powder that I could use for future batches of vinegar. So that's going to be really exciting. I'll show you next week how this turns out. But there we go. Lots of little slimy pancakes of wonderful, healthy bacteria for my family. Also adding a tray of cooked oatmeal that was left over. And then I'm just experimenting with a couple trays of apple cider. I want to see if I can make an apple cider powder that would be delicious on top of baked goods, giving it, you know, kind of an apple flavor. And then here is my vinegar that I have. I ended up with a quart. Remember, this was just leftover red wine. I had opened a bottle for cooking a recipe, and we just brewed some red wine vinegar out of the rest of it. So here are our trays. Now, remember, if you want to buy a freeze dryer, November is the month to do it. Check out the link in the description of this video. You can get $500 off a freeze dryer with Harvest Rights um, sales they have going on right now. And winter is the time for baking. My sourdough starter has been sitting in the back of my fridge for seven or eight months now, being completely neglected. So this is the week. It's time to pull it out of the fridge and revive it. I don't use a specific method for sourdough or any kind of recipes. I've had great results just eyeballing it and doing what feels intuitive. So this winter we'll be doing some sourdough baking and I'm going to take you guys along for that process and show you how that works out for me. So just feeding that sourdough starter so we can get some baking done. Speaking of baking, my little baker, David, you know, David is my second son. He is 13, almost 14 years old, and he loves to bake. This is what he wants to do when he grows up and it's another huge blessing for me as a busy mom is um, I can always count on him on this day. He wanted to make some bagels, and I was like, that is wonderful. If you make the bagels this afternoon, we will have them for breakfast tomorrow. <laughs> it's just such a blessing to have a child that loves to work in the kitchen, and he's really good at it. And so it saves me from having to do a lot of that work. And while I love to bake, and winter is the, the time of the year that I have time for it, I love to encourage David to um, handle that for me. So... Just lots of fun things going on in our house, you guys. Things are really slowing down. No garden to take care of anymore. Animal chores. Um, there's a lot less of them right now since we've processed uh, most of the animals that um, were taking up a lot of our time outdoors. We just currently have the, uh, we have three beef cows out there we're caring for, um, a small flock of maybe 30 chickens. We have about 16 ducks. 
and um, just the dogs, and then the bees are overwintered. So it's just a slower time of year. So I have more time to play with these little guys, do some fun activities, and focus on school. So that's um, just a great thing. It's time to slow down now and prepare for the baby. And so that is what I'm doing while they're busy playing. I've got a couple more hampers over here of baby stuff. I see some snow suits and some swaddlers and some cloth diapers that I pulled out of storage that I need to get all washed and put away. And that's the task that I'm working on today. And of course, the most important thing right now for me to work on is resting. It's been a busy year. I've shown you all of the things that I've been up to. Busy, busy, busy. But now my body needs to rest and prepare for birth. I am 36 weeks, so just a few more weeks and it's go time, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this look at our week. We will see you next week, my friends. Have a good one. Bye.